Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last section. We're now putting together all the information that I've provided you with, all the skills that you've learned going along. Hopefully you've been practicing doing bits and pieces along the way, bringing it all together, everything, all my experience that I've shared with you now in this two-part tutorial, uh, bring it together and, and we're going to print. We're going to print right through to the end of the tutorial now. So you should know exactly what you need by now, but you can see it all in front of you. Damp cloth and dry cloth to hand ready. This is my inking station here. I'm going to use a piece of acetate today instead of the, the tray in, in this part now. Your roller, your artist palette knife, the inks that you need. So I'll show you how different they are to work with than the SD inks that I, that I did in the other tutorial and you can see the end result. Obviously you need your print plate too, whichever design you're finally printing in this part now with your scrap papers down below here. I'm going to be printing some greetings cards, one of which has got collage on, so that's dried. I've prepared that in, in readiness. Um, and then some A4 paper that I'm going to be doing because we're going to show you how to print a multi, multi print onto one paper. I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. And we're going to use a template. So because we're printing onto A4 paper, my template is A4 paper. This is just scrap paper though, you don't have to use um, any kind of premium paper. This is just the scrap paper that we that we're using the A4 copier paper. I'm folding it to give myself um, an, un, an indication. So folding it down that way and in half this way. An indication, a line, and you can always do this with a ruler, you don't have to do this folding. Folding is just the quickest and simplest way. Just going to take that down Make sure it's completely flat. This is just a bit of regular masking tape. And what you'll do is, using this, when you've inked up your lino plate and it's ready for printing, rather than printing down on the paper, you're going to position it where it would be. And then you will lay your printing paper over the surface. And we're going to print lino that way so that every time you print with the different colour print plate it will be in exactly the location that you want it to be so you've you've done the work in preparation really then I'm gonna get my ink out naphthol red I'm gonna get some out onto my print plate and begin preparing my ink and I'm gonna start to roll the other way and you don't need to make a square any bigger than that All you would be doing if you made your square bigger than this is drying the ink out. So I can see already this ink, and I told you these are my favourite inks, I can see already it's got that nice clicky clack noise, it's got a nice texture. Look at my roller, I can see there's actually a little bit missing here. Into the centre. Okay. My roller is covered. I can see that it's nice and even, consistent over the roller. So I'm going to start transferring it now onto my print plate, if you remember. Red is a great colour to work with on lino because it's such a great contrast. You can see exactly the bits that are there and the bits you've missed. Okay, Ready. I'm going to do this by eye. Down we go. Just taking some scrap paper and just rubbing on the back. You can use a, a piece of equipment known as a baron, and they do sell them sometimes in some of the kits. And it literally is a bit like a, an upside down doorknob, something like that. And it'll just help you push over the back. As I say, it's up to you. It's, you can use one or you don't necessarily need to. If you've got a spare roller, use that. Another item you could use is actually a rolling pin. Holding with one hand, rubbing with the other, just to make sure that there's no slippage. Get in the corners, get in the edges. Just a nice firm pressure. And then lift. And hopefully you can see how even and consistent um, this ink is. It's really great to work with. It goes so far. It's, it's fantastic. 
Okay, I'm just going to place that off camera now to one side. Bring my print plate plate back to the beginning. Refer to my print plan. We're going to add some white and add some yellow and scoop it all up. Adding a tint of white, nowhere near the same amount as the butter bean quantity that I've been talking about, like less than a pea. Just going to add. And if you think you've got too much on your palette knife, just use another section of your inking um, plate, inking tray. I've got it all over my fingers. To the, to the side, just move it out of the way. You might come back and use it later. And again, same with this. Just start to mix it together. If you're not happy with the colour, of course, go back to your tubes. You can add a bit more of a different colour. And it is better to just keep adding slowly, add a little at a time. And this is starting to go a really nice orangey colour now, so I'm really happy with that. And you can make much more interesting colours by mixing them yourself. Experiment, have a bit of a play around. And actually that's probably enough ink. I don't want to put too much and ruin the design. And the more you lino print with your collection of inks that you've got, the more you'll build up a knowledge of what colours mix well together, what colours work well together, and what don't. Okay, and then by eye, line up. And I've probably got enough ink there now for another three to four prints. Just a quick flip. The big reveal, fingers crossed, and there we go. The print quality is fine. It's probably not been that much of a colour difference from the red one we did a second ago. So what I might do now, if I'm learning from that, I might just use a bit more white. Hardly any pressure at this point, applying the ink to your lino plate, just gently. You really want it to sit on the surface, so just gently to begin. And then as there becomes less ink on your roller because you've transferred it, that's the point at which you can begin. Just gently, hardly putting any pressure on at this point. And you can see it's just nicely sitting on the surface. And now we're going to print to this paper at the back. Position your lino exactly where you want it. Take the paper that you're printing onto, position it to line up with the template underneath. And then firmly press down. And don't forget as you go to keep an eye on the grooves and channels and make sure they're not filling up. So have a good look at your prints and make sure you're happy with the quality of the, of the lines. Two out of four, two more to go. And because I'm now going to change colour, I'm going to wash all my equipment and come back ready to print the blue. I'm just drying with my rag. And make sure your lino is completely dry before you use it. So you can really give it a good scrub dry with your old bit of towel. Make sure you're getting into all those grooves. And this is the German brand Schmincke Prussian Blue. You're just trying to prevent the ink going all over your hands and then transferring to your lovely prints. But 
already the roller is slipping around on the acetate but it's not there's no traction it's not sticking there's no tack so I'm actually gonna and just mix it a little with my palette knife there's a lot of the ink still on the roller I just feel a lot better and we're now going to go for this And finally, removing my card from the liner. That one is a bit fainter, but it's actually very consistent and very even. And actually, I think has turned out quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. It's almost like a denim print, but all the detail has come out lovely. It's got a really nice, um, the whites, the edges are really crisp. And I think this goes back to what I was saying originally. I think it's better to have less too little than too much ink because you can always press a lot harder um, and just get the maximum amount of ink from the ink plates. Position by eye. And when you have put collage papers on your, your print surface before you've printed, I would pay extra attention to rubbing and applying pressure. To, to transfer the ink. You just want to make sure that those papers haven't interfered with the contact that is made between the lino and the paper. It's quite interesting. I'm quite, I quite like that. So can, the point I was just making about the contact, if you can just see a white line along the top of where the newspaper meets. So I don't have a problem with it, I quite like it, but thinner papers like tissue papers will work a lot better. Or if you had put newspaper over the entire piece, that would have also worked better. But I think the lines work quite well with the design, so I don't think it's a problem. And now finally, printing the two prints left on my larger piece. Scraping up the bits of dry ink that are left over on the print plate and just adding a P, a P and two P's, two P's worth of print ink. I'm just going to give that a helping hand by mixing that in together. Make sure it's all off the palette knife. Now just lining up, just get your cloth, don't forget to keep your fingers as clean as you can in between each stage. Looking great already, one more print to go. One last time, scraping the ink. And there we have it. My lining it wasn't very good there actually, but you can perfect that. You can always trim things if you want to. I quite like them quirky. Quirky and not quite straight is always good. A final note from me, just to say a really big 
thank you for subscribing to this cu this course um, and, and taking part. You've helped to support an artist and you've helped to support the arts industry. So thanks so much. I've really enjoyed putting this course together and I just hope that you've enjoyed taking part in it as much as I have. Take care. <laughs>